Our heart beats 115,000 times in a day. And between each beat, there is a series of successive cyclic changes happening in your heart. And that is exactly what we are going to discuss under cardiac cycle. Now, when it comes to cardiac cycle, first let's see a clear definition of cardiac cycle. Now, cardiac cycle, it's a succession of coordinated events that take place during one beat of the heart. And it includes one systole and one diastole. Now, systole is when the heart chambers are contracting and diastole is when the heart chambers are relaxing. Now, coming to the events that are happening in a cardiac cycle between two beats, we divide them or categorize them into these many groups. You have the electrical changes happening in the heart, mechanical changes happening, hemodynamic changes happening, and there are also heart sounds being produced in a cardiac cycle. No, so we'll be going into details of each of the phases. Now coming to the duration of a cardiac cycle, the duration of a cardiac cycle, we tell it as 0.8 seconds. Let's see how it is derived. Heart rate, if you see, it is 75 beats per minute. And the duration of cardiac cycle then becomes 60 divided by 75, you get it as 0.8 seconds. Now let's see the split, atrial cycle and the ventricular cycle. Atrial cycle has got atrial systole and atrial diastole and the ventricle cycle has got ventricle systole and ventricular diastole. Now this atrial systole takes up 0.8 seconds. Uh, the ventricular cycle takes up 0.8 seconds. So how does the split come? The atrial systole takes up 0.1 second and the atrial diastole takes to 0.7 seconds. Ventricular cycle, ventricular systole takes 0.3 seconds and the ventricular diastole takes 0.5 seconds. That's how the split for the 0.8 second duration of the cardiac cycle goes. Now let's see a little more detail of that. Atrial systole, if you see, there is a little interesting thing to be kept in mind here. The right atrium contracts before the left atrium. And look at the second point. And the left ventricle contracts before the right ventricle. So you can see a pictorial representation of the time duration of the cardiac cycle here. You have the atrial events on the first bar and the ventricular events on the second bar. So you can see that the diastole of the atrial event takes up to, it's taking more time. It takes up to 0.7 seconds and the, the systole is really less time. You, you can just recollect the previous timings what I told you. Now coming to the ventricular events, you can see that the systole and the diastole is taking almost the same time. Systole takes up to 0.3 seconds and the diastole, the ventricular diastole takes up to 0.4 seconds. Now coming to cardiac cycle and the heart rate, let's go a little more deeper into the duration of the cardiac cycle. You can see that the duration of the cardiac cycle is inversely proportional to heart rate. That means, what do you mean by that? If the heart rate is increasing, the cardiac cycle duration is going to come down and vice versa. Now, there is a two more things to be kept in mind here. The diastole takes a longer period, 60 to 65 percent time, and the systole takes up a lesser time duration of 35 or 40 percent. This concept we have already discussed in the previous slide when, when I was telling to you all about the duration of the cardiac cycle. This is only to make it more reinforced, more clear. We just put it in a percentage way. Now, we can, uh, now I'm just elaborating on the first point here. Cardiac cycle is inversely proportional to heart rate let's see how it goes. You can see that if the heart rate is increased, cardiac cycle duration comes down. How does that happen? So when the heart rate is more, what is happening to the systole? The systole duration is coming down, but the duration of diastole, by putting three arrows, I try to communicate that the duration of diastole is further, you know, is coming down uh, to a much more extent than to which the systole is coming down. Now, decrease in systole is 60 to 65 percent, and the decrease in diastole is 35 to 40 percent. Now, if the heart rate is increased, it becomes, let's take it up approximately 150 beats per minute and then the cardiac cycle duration you can see from 0.8 seconds it has come down to 0.4 seconds. 
Systole here would take up a time of 0.25 seconds and diastole is taking up a time of 0.15 seconds. So the contribution of time taken systole is more and the diastole has really come down. This is exactly what you know I was trying to tell from this point. And, and there is little time here left for ventricular filling when you know there is this kind of a change which when it is happening in the heart. Heart rate has gone to around 150 beats per minute and the cardiac cycle duration has come to around 0.4 seconds. This is a major lacuna which would happen. There would be very little time for the ventricular filling to happen because if ventricle is not getting filled properly, it is going to affect the stroke volume, the eject fraction all that is going to be get affected. Now going further coming to the mechanical changes the systole and diastole this is just a repetition of that uh, the time duration just to reinforce it to you all the atrial systole takes 0.1 second diastole takes 0.7 seconds ventricular systole takes 0.3 seconds and the ventricular diastole 0.5 seconds. Now, here you have a picture of the cardiac cycle. The word itself tells you the events which are happening between two consecutive heartbeats, heartbeats is cardiac cycle. And why do you call it a cycle? Because after each beat, after every successive beat, the cycle is continuously repeating. So you have the atrial systole here, then you have the isovolumetric ventricular systole and then it goes into the ventricular ejection phase. I put a two there which tells you that the ventricular ejection phase, there are again two phases. You have the I think uh, we'll just go to the split in the coming up slide. I, I don't want to confuse you all at the beginning itself. So from the ventricular rejection phase, you have the isovolumetric ventricular relaxation phase. Then we go to the ventricular filling phase, which again has got, you know, uh, two limbs. That's why a two is put there. And then the heart again goes back to atrial systole and the cardiac cycle continues. So in, in the session, what we are going to do, do is, in detail, we need to know what exactly is happening in all the different phases of the cardiac cycle. Now, a little more on the, uh, the different phases of the cardiac cycle with the time taken. You can see that here on the top axis, you have the duration of the cardiac cycle that is 0.8 seconds. And you can see that it's divided into atrial systole, ventricular systole and ventricular diastole. Here from this uh, figure, I want you all to reinforce and be thorough with the name of the different phases of the cardiac cycle before we really go into the, the mechanical and the other pressure and volume changes which are going to happen in the each of the phase. So we have the atrial systole at the beginning which takes up a time of 0.1 second. Then we have the ventricular systole which is divided into isovolumetric contraction phase. You have the rapid ejection phase and then you have the slow ejection phase. And you can see the time being divided 0.05 second, 0.1 second and 0.15 second. So all this added up together will take you or give you the time of the total ventricular systole. Now coming to the ventricular diastole, the phase is divided into isovolumetric relaxation phase, rapid filling phase, then you have the reduced filling phase or the diastasis and then finally it comes back to the atrial systole. So this phases is going to repeat in a cyclic manner. Now, uh, so the cardiac cycle uh, I would like to explain first in a pictorial way the diagram I've already drawn and kept in order to save time. And so each step of the cardiac cycle with changes happening in the atria, the ventricle and the iota would be done. See what is happening with this diagram, it's not. It, it's a pictorial representation where you can see that the left side of the heart is being portrayed here. The major changes of the, the simultaneously similar changes are happening on the right side of the heart also. Only difference is the pressure difference in the left chambers of the heart and the right chambers of the heart. So knowing the importance of the left side of the heart, the cardiac cycle we'll be discussing through these seven diagrams which have uh, drawn, we'll be going through the different phases of the cardiac cycle. So here we have, so here you have the, so here uh, the left atria, uh, the left ventricle and the iota 
uh, which is drawn here and under each phase the first phase you have atrial systole then the stage progresses to the isovolumetric ventricular contraction phase so each phase when we are going further i'll be taking you all through similar seven figures and what you need to keep in mind is each phase when i am uh, explaining let it be the atrial phase or the different phases of the ventricular systole or the diastole you will have to keep in mind or you will have to write what are the changes happening in the atria what are the changes happening in the ventricle and what are the changes happening in the iota so at every step the changes happening in these three places will have to be both the pressure and the volume changes needs to be mentioned here. So let's start with the atrial systole. So atrial systole, so you can see that atrial systole is when the atria is contracting. So that is actually clear from the picture where I've drawn the inward arrow which is showing that atria is contracting. Can, and you can see, can you see the valve here? You have the uh, the atrioventricular valve here, the bicuspid valve here, and you can see the aortic valve here. So in the phase or when the heart is in the atrial systole, the aortic valve is closed. And here, what is happening here? The, uh, the bicuspid valve or the atrioventricular valve is opened, atria is contracting, and while when atria is contracting, what is it trying to do? It is trying to empty or it is trying to push its content into the ventricle. But please keep in mind that before, see, why? if you look at the figure, you can see that uh, the atria is contracting, before the atria is contracting and trying to pour in the blood into the ventricle, you can see that the ventricle is already 80% filled with blood. How it is getting 80% filled, you will uh, understand when we reach the 6th and the 7th stages of this explanation. So now just keep in mind that atria is entering uh, or the ventricle enters into atrial systole where the ventricle is filled with 80% blood. So here the atria is contracting. So when atria is contracting, what is happening? The pressure in the atria is increasing and, and that pressure increase when we try to record a jugular vein pulse you get the first positive wave recording in the jugular venous uh, wave which is the A wave that is what I have drawn there and when atria is contracting the only valve which is opened is the atrioventricular valve and the blood in the atria is being emptied into the ventricle. Now the ventricle is filled now we move on to the next phase which is the isovolumetric ventricular contraction phase. That name itself tell you, isovolumetric ventricular contraction phase. So ventricle is contracting, but it is contracting as a closed chamber that gives you the first lead to explain the whole process. So you look at how is it, the, the atrioventricular valve, the blue valve in the picture here, which was opened in the first phase has closed here. So uh, both that means there is no in in both the input and the output valve of the ventricle is closed and the ventricle has started to contract this arrow tells you which chamber is contracting here in atrial systole the inward arrow around the atria was telling you that atria is contracting and here when the inward arrow is at the ventricle it tells you that the ventricle is contracting so now here in this figure the ventricle is contracting as a closed chamber and ventricle when it uh, contracts as a closed chamber you can see that the pressure is increasing here when the pressure from zero as uh, slowly as it is contracting the pressure is building up it becomes 5 it becomes 10 15 20 25 30 it has reached 80 at the end of isovolumetric contraction phase so what is happening now the ventricle needs to keep on contracting as a closed chamber there is nothing now coming into the ventricle there is nothing now going out of the ventricle so ventricle is contracting as a closed chamber so that is what is happening in the so there is no volume change happening that's what the word is isovolumetric because nothing is coming in nothing is going out only the pressure in the ventricle is increasing because it is contracting as a closed chamber and let's see what is happening when the ventricle is contracting what is happening in the atria atria you can see 
the A wave was already created in the jugular venous pulse tracing during atrial systole, isn't it? Now here, when the ventricle has started, before the ventricle has started contracting, the atrioventricular valve is already closed, you can see here. So now when the ventricle is contracting as a closed chamber, the pressure in the ventricle from 5, 10, 15, it is reaching almost 80. What happens here is this atrioventricular valve just pushes a little back because of the pressure which is being built up in the ventricle and that slight push of the valve creates the second deflection, second positive deflection in the jugular venous pulse tracing which we get as the C wave. That is what is marked here. And can you uh, uh, see something drawn here? There is actually the lungs. So what is happening is all through the figure, after the first figure, you can see I have drawn this picture because the oxygenated blood from the lungs is continuously being poured into the atria. So when ventricle is entering into the a uh, series of phases, atria after the systole, atria is in its diastole here. Atria is getting filled from the ox uh, with the oxygenated blood from the lungs. That is what is shown here. So what is happening? As it is getting filled, slowly, there isn't any significant increase in pressure in the atria here. So now, let's see now what is happening in the iota. So here, now what is the body trying to aim at? The heart, the pressure needs to increase beyond the pressure in the iota only when the ventricular pressure goes above the pressure in the iota only then this aortic valve is going to open and the ventricle will be able to the left ventricle will be able to pour its content into the iota so the pressure in the ventri uh, the iota in this phase is lower than the pressure in the ventricle Ventricle, because it's contracting as a closed chamber, the pressure in the ventricle is keeping on increasing. The pressure in the iota is around 80. So only if the pressure in the ventricle goes above 80 can this atrioventricular valve open. So that is with the isovolumetric ventricular contraction phase. We go to the next phase, that is the third phase, which is the rapid ejection phase. That word itself tells you. That means the pressure from 80. I told you the pressure in the iota, uh, when the pressure in the ventricle goes above the pressure in the iota, this Iotic valve is going to open. That is exactly what has happened here. The ventricle is contracting now, but not as a closed chamber. Ventricle keeps on contracting. Pressure from 0, 5, 80, 90, it has become 120. Now pressure in the ventricle is clearly more than the pressure in the iota. And the iotic valve is opened and it is a rapid ejection phase. That means there is major outflow or major ejection of blood from the ventricle into the iota and the iota is going to carry the blood into all the other parts of your circulation. Now look at what is happening at the atria. Atria you had the A wave recorded, C wave recorded and then what happens is the oxygenated blood from the lungs is continuously being filled in the atria. Atria is in its diastole. So what you can see this, you can see the next wave recorded in the jugular venous pulse tracing which is a, a third positive wave which is a V wave and how is it happening because of the filling atria is slowly getting filled and because the atria is getting filled with the blood the pressure in the atria is slightly increasing that is exactly what you are recording as the third positive deflection the V wave in the JVP and uh, that's all with this phase uh, so now come to the fourth phase where you have the slow ejection phase now in the slow ejection phase this representation gives you a clear idea. So arrow is still inward. That means the ventricle is continuing to contract. But what happens here is in the rapid ejection phase, a major content of the uh, ventricle has been already poured into the iota. What happens then? The ventricular pressure starts falling down. That's what this arrow tells. From 120, the pressure is dropping down and uh, what will happen then? Now also blood from the ventricle is going to the iota but it's going at a slow pace because the major content has already been emptied in the rapid ejection phase. Now what is happening? Let's see what is happening in the atria. Now you need not talk about any JVP recording here. So here in the atria, atria continues to be in diastole and the oxygenated blood is uh, getting filled in the atria. So that is what the figure tells. Now coming to the next phase, we have the isovolumetric ventricular relaxation phase. That means the ventricular systole is over. Ventricle is now entering to its 
relaxation phase. So you can see the arrow here, the ventricles have started relaxing and isovolumetric relaxation phase. That means the ventricle is relaxing as a closed chamber. That means this valve is closed. That means the atrio ventricular valve is closed and when the pressure in the ventricle went much below the pressure in the iota what happens is there is a backflow of blood in the iota towards the ventricle and immediately the atrioventricular uh, sorry the aortic valve will close so and then what has happened is the ventricle has started to relax and it's relaxing as a closed chamber there is no change in volume neither any blood is coming into the ventricle neither any blood is going into the going out of the ventricle but what is the pressure change here pressure is dropping from it had raised up to 120 now it again comes back down to 190 80 it almost reaches 5 here in this phase and what is happening in the atria here atria uh, again, the oxygenated blood from the lungs is uh, filling the atria. Atria is getting more and more filled atria in his diastole, getting ready to go into the phase of contraction or the systole. Now, what is happening in the iota? Iota already has, you know, all the blood which has been poured in by the ventricle in it. It is trying to push and squeeze all the blood uh, from its chambers into the greater circulation. So that's about the isovolumetric phase. Now we go to the sixth phase where we have the rapid passive ventricular filling. That means which is a valve which is going to open here? You have the atrioventricular. So what happens here is the ventricular pressure drops down and when the pre ventricular pressure drops down to below the pressure in the atria, it is exactly then this atrioventricular valve will flip open and, and what does the word tell? Rapid passive ventricular filling. That means, you know, because of pure gravity, this atria was filled with blood. Moment this and you have the ventricle down. So moment this atrioventricular valve opens, just because of gravity, the whole blood which is in the atria just pours down and fills in the ventricle. Now before that happens, please remember that, can you see what is marked here as the end systolic volume? There is some amount of blood. See here, uh, when the atria, uh, ventricle was contracting and trying to push the blood in the iota, how much ever during the rapid ejection phase and the slow ejection phase is done, even then there is some amount of blood remaining back in the ventricle which we call as the, that, uh, the, the, that is what is marked as the ESV. The, so what happens is this rapid passive ventricular filling when the atria empties its content into the ventricle by the process of passive filling. What do you mean by passive? There isn't any active involvement of the atria here. Atria hasn't started going into its stole. Atria is not contracting. Only the atrioventricular valve is opened and because of gravity, you know, the blood just fills in the and that is over this end systolic volume. So the pressure is keeping on dropping and you can see that the ventricle is relaxing. Now we go to the last phase of the cardiac cycle which is the slow passive ventricular filling phase. We also call it as a diastasis. Here what do you see? So uh, the, the, the sixth phase, this is the seventh phase here now. In the sixth phase, I think I'll, I just, I'll just go back to it for a reinforcement there. So here if you see, uh, it was passive filling. The valve had opened and all the contents had gone down into the uh, ventricle, isn't it? Now here if you see, whatever was there in the ventricle during the previous phase was emptied into the ventricle and ventricle is almost now, you know, 70% filled with blood. Now here what you see is, there isn't any active contribution from the atria. Atria hasn't started contracting. It hasn't started going into the systole. That's a point you need to remember. So here you can see that the arrow till all the other phase, the oxygenated blood reaching the atria. Here you can see that the atria is functioning as a conduit here. That means the oxygenated blood directly through the atria, through the atrioventricular valve is reaching the a ventricle and here you need to keep in mind that atria is acting as a conduit. So that's a phase of diastasis. Ventricle is still relaxing. Iota is now trying to the pressure in the iota has also come down because a major blood content of the iota it is already emptied into the other vessel. Now after the seventh phase you can see that the atria 
goes back into the systole. That is what the first figure told, atrial systole. When atria starts to contract, it ejects out the 20% of the blood remaining where uh, the ventricle is entering into the atrial systole and it is 80% filled with blood. So that's about the cardiac cycle. Now what we are going to do is phase by phase, I have just the, the pictorial explanation I have given you and now you should be clearly thorough with what's happening in the phase. Now let's go split by split where a more of reinforcement of the cardiac cycle is going to happen. So now going step by step, we have ventricular systole. So I've just, uh, whatever, you know, has been explained through the diagram, it's uh, the, the, the most important points which you need to really take down and write in your paper or which you need to really keep in your mind has been just put as point wise. But there is nothing, you know, the proper understanding of the cardiac cycle, you all would have already got when we went through those seven different cyclical events of the cardiac cycle. Everything, the change is happening in the atria, change is happening in the ventricle, change is happening at the iota was all discussed, all with pressure and volume changes. Now let's go one by one. Now ventricles, ventricular systole, uh, it takes a duration of 0.3 seconds. The isovolumetric contraction phase took 0.05 seconds. The ejection phase. Now ejection phase had the minimal ejection phase, the maximum ejection phase and the reduced ejection phase where this is the time distribution. 0.1 seconds, 0.08 and 0.13 seconds. A little more reinforcement. So whenever you hear this name, you need to think back about the different phases or those seven uh, figures which we had discussed. Now, ventricular systole, at the start of the ventricular systole, the semilunar valves were closed and the atrioventricular valves opened. Just try to recollect back those figures. Ventricles were filled and what is the end diastolic volume? It was 120 to 140 ml and there was an increased intraventricular pressure which was more than the pressure in the atria which actually uh, caused the closure of the atrioventricular valve. And the ventricles have become a closed chamber now. Then you have the isovolumetric contraction. So you know isovolumetric contraction was ventricle was contracting as a closed chamber and the duration was 0.05 second and it coincides with the C wave in the JVP. The semilunar valves are closed here, the AV valves are closed and you, you hear the first heart sound there. We'll be doing this part in a much more detailed form in the coming up slides and it's a closed chamber. So the ventricle is contracting as a closed chamber. There is no change happening in the volume and there is surely an increase in the intraventricular pressure. Now to the ejection phase. Ejection phase, here the intraventricular pressure is keeping on increasing and it's greater than 80 millimeters of mercury. That's diastolic pressure of the iota. So you know that in the ejection phase, the, eight, uh, the aortic valve is going to open only when the ventricular pressure becomes more than the pressure in the iota. Now the semilunar valves are forced to open when the pressure in the ventricle becomes more than the pressure in the iota and now the blood flows into the arteries from the or into the iota from the ventricle. This is just a revision. Now the ejection phase, it takes a time of 0.22 seconds. A maximum ejection phase takes up to 0.12 seconds and due to the high pressure gradient, blood is ejected into the iota. In the figure, we discussed in the figure, you saw only the iota, but please keep in mind the same time ejection is happening, the same events are happening. So blood, when it is getting pushed into the iota from the left ventricle, from the right ventricle, blood is being pushed into the pulmonary arteries. Now the reduced ejection phase, you can see the time taken is 0.12 to 0.16 seconds and due to a decreased pressure gradient because the pressure in the ventricle is coming down and because of that uh, you know the and it's the reduced ejection phase it's because the pressure in the ventricle has gone down in the third fourth phase uh, the amount of blood now being ejected from the ventricle in the atria is coming down and that's exactly why we call it as a reduced ejection phase and stroke volume is 70 ml the end systolic volume is 40 to 50 ml and the end diastolic volume minus the stroke volume will give you the ESV which is around 120 minus uh, 70 it is 50. The end systolic volume 
if you can recollect in towards the last when the ventricle before the atria contracted or when that passive filling of the ventricle was happening if you could recollect in the figure i had drawn a small uh, line or a filled esv you know which was around 50 ml i told you even after the ventricle contracting and trying to empty its content into the aorta there is going to be some amount of blood remaining in the ventricle which we call as the end systolic volume and how do you get that end systolic volume it is the end diastolic volume minus the stroke volume which is going to give you that now coming to the ventricular diastole it takes up to 0.53 seconds and you have the protodiastolic phase isovolumetric relaxation phase the rapid inflow phase diastasis atrial systole and this is the all what we have finished discussing here i have just put the timings each phase takes now to the protodiastolic phase this uh, this has been discussed as you know uh, a separate heading because there is a little importance here the time duration with the the protodiastolic phase takes a 0.04 seconds and the ventricle here in the protodiastolic phase is relaxing the intraventricular pressure is lesser than the pressure in the aorta and the pulmonary arteries so what happens here the blood flows back from these aorta and the pulmonary artery back into the ventricle and that actually makes the semi luna valves close and that gives you the second heart sound so that's about the protodiastolic phase and now when we come to the next phase that is the isovolumetric relaxation phase this is the time it takes 0.08 seconds and here in this phase you can see that the semi luna valves and the atrio uh, and the atrioventricular valves are closed here the ventricle relaxes as a closed chamber there is no volume change the intraventricular pressure here decreases in the isovolumetric relaxation phase it needs to come down to the pressure in the atria only then the atrioventricular valves are going to open here you have the rapid inflow phase this is the time it takes there is a reduced intraventricular pressure and it is much lesser than the intraatrial pressure and hence the av valves open so now when the ventricular pressure ventricle is relaxing pressure in the ventricle goes down and the uh, moment the ventricular pressure goes below the pressure in the atria it is then the av valves are going to open and it is after that the passive filling is going to happen now once the av valves open blood flows from the atria into the ventricle without any contribution from the atria and you hear the third heart sound please keep all this in mind but when we discuss heart sounds we'll be going in a more systematic way to into all this so you have the diastasis which takes 0.19 seconds and there is increase in intraventricular pressure and why is it intraventricular pressure increasing now because of the increased blood flow from the atria now the blood flows from the atria to the ventricle at a low rate or a static rate because there is no contribution from the atria and the duration of diastasis is variable it depends on the the blood so anywhere a change in cardiac cycle you can see the major variation happening you know with this time duration because without much effect on the cardiac function it can take up or consume time from this particular phase now we have the atrial systole and this is the last phase of the ventricular diastole and this is the time it takes and it coincides with the a wave of the jpp this is where we exactly started our figure the first figure where the way you had seen the first wave the a wave now the contraction of the atria you hear the fourth heart sound and it drives some more blood into the ventricle so it's only 20% of the ventricular filling which is going to happen when the atria is contracting now increase and it will from 80% is already filled so maximum add on by the atrial contraction is maximum going to be between 25 to 35% so now here you have the cardiac side this is just a repetition i'm just trying to reinforce atrial systole isovolumetric contraction phase rapid ejection phase slow ejection phase isovolumetric rel relaxation phase rapid passive filling slow passive filling and then it goes back to the atrial cycle so between two heartbeats this particular series of changes the cyclic changes keep on repeating in your heart
So here you have all this. So whatever we have explained till now, the pressure changes, the volume changes in the in the uh, atria, in the ventricle, in the iota, along with heart sounds, ECG, it's been depicted in one graphical form. So what I would like to do is, we won't discuss because, but you need to learn drawing this, but to make things more easy for you, I'm going to explain it. I'm just going to take it out and explain. So once you understand it individually, it's going to be easy for you to draw it as such where x-axis would have all these parameters and uh, sorry the x-axis would have time on it and y-axis you would have all these different parameters done so let's go in detail so first we go with heart sounds heart sounds if you see it is due to the dynamics of blood flow that's how is how you you know why is heart sounds produced so this is exactly what to tell it is because of the dynamics of blood flow you hear the heart sound and Heart sound, what you hear, has got different components. You have the valvular component, vascular component, and the muscular component, or you call it as a muscular vibrations. All these three components contribute together, and you hear it as different heart sounds. There are four heart sounds. Now, the two audible heart sounds are, you call it as in simple words, the love and the dove, but you need to remember this. There are four recordable heart sounds. Two audible heart sounds, which is love and dove, and there are four recordable heart sounds. Let's go in detail what it is. Now, if you look at the first heart sound, S1, let, uh, we'll be going by certain headings. So if you're able to remember this, for all the heart sounds, you're going to discuss under these headings. So you have the character of the first heart sound. It is low pitch, it's a booming voice, and it's a longer sound. Duration is 0 0.1 second to 0 0.17 second and the frequency is around 24 to 45 per second. The first heart sound and the closure of the AV valve is what is actually producing that love sound, the first heart sound and and what is the, you know, that is a valvular contribution. Now the vibrations of the chordae tendine is adding on to the sound. The vascular component is because of the turbulence which is produced by the uh, blood flow. And what is the muscular component here? The vibrations in the ventricular muscles as it starts to contract. Now all these three things, one, two and three actually adds up to what you hear as the first heart sound which is the lump. Now, the auscultatory areas, where do you auscultate it? It's in the, the mitral area and the tricuspid area. Mitral area, it's in the epical area and the tricuspid area. And the first heart sound coincides with these three things. The isometric contraction phase, the peak of the R wave of the ECG, and in the phlebogram, it is the onset of, that is, you know, where I talked about the JVP recording, the jugular venous pulse recording, third one. It coincides, the first heart sound, the closure of the atrioventricular valve, the love sound, coincides with these three series of the cardiac cycle. Isometric contraction phase, peak of the R wave of the ECG and also the onset of the C wave in the phlebogram or the jugular venous pulse tracing. Now it has got two components, the first heart sound. It's got the mitral component and the tricuspid component. Now here the mitral precedes the tricuspid. Please keep this particular point in mind. Among the two components, the mitral and the tricuspid, the mitral precedes the tricuspid sound. And why is it so? Because the mitral valve closes earlier compared to the closure of the tricuspid valve. And normally, even though there are two components, there is no splitting of the first heart sound. And at times, splitting of first heart sound can happen when there is a right bundle branch block or when the contraction of the right ventricle is delayed. So whenever you happen to listen a splitting of first heart sound, this could be the two possible reason, the right bundle branch block and also the contraction or and also when the contraction of the right ventricle, be very specific here, when the contraction of the right ventricle is getting delayed, there could be a splitting of the first heart sound being heard. Now, in two more other conditions, there are many other conditions, there could be reverse splitting of the first heart sound, which happens in, you know, when the tricuspid closes before the mitral or when there is a left bundle branch block. In these two conditions, there could be a reverse splitting of the first heart sound, which can happen. Now coming to the second heart sound or S2, it has got a higher pitch, 
it's more a snapping sound and it's of a shorter duration duration is 0 0.10 to 0.14 second frequency is 50 per second and the closure of the semilunar valves is actually uh, giving you the second heart sound and the auscultatory where do you auscultate it you auscultate in the aortic area and the pulmonary area these little things you need to have at the tip of your tongue and it coincides with what and all in the cardiac cycle the onset of the ventricular diastole and it is preceded or it coincides or it follows the T wave in the ECG. And the third you have, you need to talk about the phlebogram where it forms the ascending limb of the V wave. We'll be doing phlebogram in detail in the coming up slides. Now, the second heart sound has got two components here. You have the IoT component and the pulmonary component. IoT component, we in short, we write it as A2 and the pulmonary component, we put it as P2. And normally, P2 is softer than A2. And there could be a split in case of a right bundle branch block. So that's about second heart sound. Now S1 and S2, you know, a little uh, different way of looking at it, which is going to reinforce S1 and S2 into you. S1 is heard at the beginning of a ventricular systole. I'm not telling anything new. I'm just trying to look at S1 and S2 at a different angle so that you become more and more thorough with the cardiac cycle. So S1, if you see, it is heard at the beginning of the systole and S2 is heard at the end of the systole, isn't it? It's very interesting. You know now all the features of S1 and S2, but this is now two very important things you can keep in mind. S1 heard at the beginning of ventricular systole and S2 heard at the end of the ventricular systole. Now this interval of S1 and S2 shows actually what? It is the duration of the ventricular systole and the interval between S2 and S1 is actually the duration of the ventricular diastole. This, this understanding you all should have about the heart sound. It gives you a much more clarity on the cardiac cycle. Now coming to the third heart sound, it's called as a physiologic atrial heart sound. It's only the two, one and two, which is audible. Now three and four, or we put it as recordable heart sound. So it's physiological atrial heart sound, low intensity, low frequency with the frequency of 20 hertz, duration is 0.07 to 0.1 seconds, and it's due to the rapid ventricular filling. Please keep this in mind. What is the reason for the third heart sound? And it's low pitch, it can be recorded, but it's not audible. It it's frequently heard in children. Why is it frequently heard? In it's not a pathological condition. It's frequently heard in children because of a thin wall chest. And sometimes, or you know, patients with ventricular failure, also you can see the third heart sound. If it is heard in an adult, it could be because of, there could be a pathological reason behind it. When there is ventricular failure in adults, you know, you would hear the third heart sound. If it is heard in adult, it just put it the last point. It could be any cardiac ab abnormality, example, mitral regurgitation. During mitral regurgitation or during ventricular failure, third heart sound is heard. But if heard in children, it could be because of the chest is thin walled. Now coming to the fourth heart sound, S4, it's not heard in normal subject. It is only recorded atrial systole causes the vibration of the atrial valve, AV valves and the ventricular valves. Now, that is what you hear as S4, and this S4 will be heard just before the first heart sound. And it is heard in abnormal conditions. What are the abnormal conditions where you're going to hear the fourth heart sound? Hypertrophy of the atrium. And it is absent in atrial fibrillation. These little, little points you all need to keep in your mind. Now coming to the phonocardiogram. Now what is phonocardiogram? It's a graphic recording of the heart sounds where here in this you can see the first, second and the third where the duration, amplitude and the frequency of vibration of the heart sounds can be assessed through a phonocardiogram, which is a graphic recording of the heart sounds. Now, what is the clinical significance? It's useful for detecting any abnormality. Any abnormality will be reflected through the heart sound. The, you know, the variations in heart sounds can be seen, you know, through a phonocardiogram. Uh, the loudness, length and the interval between sounds can be assessed. Splitting of sounds can be known if there are any, any additional sounds, if there are any kind of murmurs, everything can be well understood 
and that is exactly the clinical significance of knowing or understanding the heart sounds. Now, coming to the hemodynamic changes of the cardiac cycle, we've already done this. I'm just going, you know, splitting out the contents and explaining hemodynamic changes. If you look at the cardiac cycle, pressure and the volume changes which are happening in the atria and the ventricle during cardiac cycles, intraatrial pressure curve, intraventricular pressure curve, aortic pressure curve, and the ventricular volume curve. See, all this we have finished discussing. What was happening in the atria with pressure and volume? What was happening? in the ventricle with pressure and volume, what was happening in the iota with pressure and volume. The concept is clear for you all, but only thing, all this, when it's put in a graphical form, how are we going to explain it? Because when you get it as a question, you should clearly know how to draw a graph and explain it. But the concept is thoroughly clear for you all now. Now coming to the intraatrial pressure curve. Now what is that? The pressure changes in the atria is reflected in the veins near the heart. Example, the jugular vein. Isn't it? So, so when you, so that's what we are trying to do, the JVP tracing, the phlebogram, the, you remember the A wave, C wave and the V wave which I have drawn is what exactly we are talking about here. So whatever changes happening, the pressure changes happening in the atria, how are we going to measure? You already know that it will be directly reflected in the jugular vein. So you are going to take a recording of the pressure changes in the jugular vein which will give you a clear picture of the pressure change happening in the atria and we go to phlebogram. So you have the phlebogram here, the JVP recording and you can see three positive waves A, C and V. We had already done this in the seven step cardiac cycle diagram and there are two negative waves here x and the y the dips and and you can see atrial systole ventricular systole ventricular diastole the x axis clearly tells you exactly where either uh, the these different waves are falling now here you have it one two 1, 2, 3, 4 and 3, 4. So it's been named here. What is 1? 1 is when the atrioventricular valve is closing. 2 is when the semilunar valves are opening. Then what is this gap? 1 and 2. That is the isovolumetric contraction phase. And then you have 3 here marked. And what is happening at 3? The semilunar valves are uh, closing. Now 4 you have which is falling in the ventricular diastole where the AV valves are opening and now what is this 3 and 4? It is a iso, isometric relaxation phase. So if you can just keep this graph with what is written here, if you can just go back to the, the seven pictures or the diagrams of the heart with which I have explained the cardiac cycle, you get a more clarity on that because we have clearly explained all this there. So this is only a reinforcement which is happening. So phleb phlebogram, you have the A wave here. That was the first positive wave and that was happening due to atrial systole. Now as the atria contracting, the pressure was increasing and this precedes the QRS complex in an ECG and it's absent in atrial fibrillation. So that's about the A wave. Now coming to the C wave, that was the second positive wave. You remember when the ventricle was contracting as a closed chamber, because the pressure was increasing, the valve, the atrioventricular valve was slightly pushed back, which increased the pressure in the atria, which gave you the C wave. So that is exactly what it tells here. The only new point here is it begins at the end of the QRS complex. Now, the V wave, which is the third positive wave, well, why was that happening? The atria in its diastole was keeping on getting filled with the oxygenated blood from the lungs, which was increasing the pressure in the atria. So that's why you were getting the third wave as the V wave, the positive deflection, and it occurs after the T wave of the ECG. The only new thing which I'm introducing here, you all too, is the correlation with the ECG. Rest all is done. So you get V wave there. Now the negative two waves, X and the Y. The Now when is it uh, first dip X wave happening? That is in the ejection phase when there is rapid fall in pressure and, the, and it pulls the atrioventricular ring down. That is when the pressure slightly drops down. And the negative wave, Y happens when the atrioventricular valves open and the blood from the atria is emptying into the ventricle. The, the, uh, these are exactly the two times when we get the two negative dips or the negative deflections of the JVP. So here, now we go to the left ventricular 
pressure curve changes. So you have it here. So left ventricular pressure changes is going to be really easy for you all because all through that seven diagrams of the cardiac cycle, we were going through the left ventricular pressure changes. I think I'll just brief it up here. Uh, one second. Uh, let me just go back to this. Yeah, so you have it here. Uh, so you can see the closure of the atrial systole is happening where you can see that when the atria is contracting, there wasn't much change in the ventricular pressure. But when the AV valves close and when the ventricle started entering into the isovolumetric contraction phase, when ventricle started contracting as a closed chamber, the pressure in the ventricle kept on increasing and it kept on increasing. And when it's three, that is when the semilunar valves open. That means the pressure in the ventricle, left ventricle, when it went more than the pressure in the iota, the semilunar valves opened and then the ventricle entered into the rapid ejection phase when the pressure from 80 kept on increasing to 120 and the blood the major amount of blood in the ventricle was getting emptied into the iota and then you had the slow ejection phase when the pressure in the ventricle from 120 started falling down you can see the curve also falling down and it uh, the, when the ventricular pressure went below the pressure in the iota you can see that the semilunar valves is closed and now it is the isovolumetric relaxation phase when the ventricle is relaxing as a closed chamber and the pressure in the ventricle really comes down you reach 0.6 that is when the AV valves open and the pressure the ventricular diastole the pressure is down. So then you have the right ventricular pressure changes. Left was done so thorough. Right it's all the same except for a little difference in pressure. Here when we discuss left ventricular changes, I was talking about pressure, how it increased from 0 to 5, then to 80, 120, then how it dropped out. Here that's the only difference there. The whole process is the same here. It's similar to left ventricular pressure changes, but only here when left ventricle, the pressure went up to 120 millimeters of mercury. Here the peak pressure was only 25 millimeters of mercury and the diastolic pressure here in the uh, uh, in the right ventricle is only 2 millimeters of mercury. That's the only difference from the left chamber pressure changes, but the process is all the same. So here now you have the iotic pressure changes. Now iotic pressure changes again you have similar to the left ventricular pressure change. You have a graph here. So point one, see you, along with the figure you just have to draw this. Moment these two are there, there isn't, it's, it's absolutely not difficult to explain the whole process. So number one here, so you can see on the x-axis it is ventricular systole and ventricular diastole marked here and here you have the pressure depicted on the y-axis. So point one is what? Point one is when? So we are talking about what is happening in the iota, isn't it? So at point one, the semilunar valves were opening. So moment the semilunar valves open, you can see that blood from the uh, I think we'll just do this and then I'll explain this. So, so two you have here, the maximum ejection phase. And what is this two to three? It's a reduced ejection phase. And three you have where, you know, the ventricular diastole is ending. Four is where the semilunar valves are closing. And three to four is just a small positive wave. So when the semilunar valves open, ventricle is pushing blood into the iota and the pressure in the iota is increasing. That is what you see as the pressure increase from 82. So the semilunar valves opened when the ventricular pressure went above 80. Only when the pressure in the ventricle goes above the pressure in the iota, the semilunar valves can open. So that was what has happened here. When the semilunar valves opened, now the ventricular pressure, it kept on increasing 90, 100, 120. And along with the blood, the pressure in the ventricle is also getting transferred to the iota and the iotic pressure increases. And how long does it increase? Now it starts falling down, you know, at the end of the maximum ejection phase. 2 to 3 is the reduced ejection phase when the, the major of the content, the ventricular content has been emptied into the iota. 2 to 3 when that uh, pouring of blood from the ventricle to the iota has reduced. That's why the pressure in the iota is also going down. Now at 3 you can see that the ventricular diastole has ended and 4 you can see that when the pressure in the uh, ventricle has gone down really much down the pressure in the iota what happens is blood from the iota has a tendency to flow back and that actually causes the closing of the semilunar valves and you can see that the pressure in the iota has really gone down and this uh, 3 to 4 is basically a very small positive wave deflection that's about the iotic pressure changes.
And now let's go through the ventricular volume changes. It's all what we have discussed. I'm just splitting the whole concept. So you can see that the ventricular systole and the ventricular diastole, and you have the, uh, you can see that uh, the ventricular volume, uh, when it started contracting, isn't it? When the ventricle started contracting, isovolumetric contraction phase, when the ventricle was contracting as a closed chamber, you can see that there isn't any change because nothing was coming into the ventricle, nothing was going out of the ventricle. But when what happened, you know, the ventricular systole, when the rapid ejection phase started, there is a rapid blood from the ventricle is being poured into the iota. That means what is happening to the volume in the ventricle? Volume in the ventricle is rapidly falling down. Now in the reduced ejection phase, when almost the major content of the ventricle has been poured into to the, the vessels, you can see that there isn't much change in the, that's the isovolumetric relaxation phase. There isn't much change in the ventricular volume. Now again, what happens is in ventricular diastole, when the ventricle is getting relaxed, what is happening to the ventricle? Ventricle is getting filled. So you can again see that the volume in the ventricle is increasing. So that's about the ventricular volume change when you put it in a graphical form. Now, coming to the cardiac cycle, so what we have done now is, I told you at the beginning itself, you're going to put it as this graph as a whole. So what I've taken you now is, I've taken you separately through all these graphs, heart sounds, phlebogram, ECG, the IOT pressure change, volume change, so all this. Now, it's only that all those individual split ones have been put together on one graph because unless you do this or you uh, you try to understand this separately, it's going to be a little confusing. Now, with that background, if you try to read this graph, where you can see that on this phase, the different phases of cardiac cycle is mentioned. It's just putting together of all our previous 10, 15 slides. So that's about uh, the cardiac cycle. Now I'll just take you through a brief summary of the cardiac cycle. So here, the beginning of one contraction till the beginning of the next is what we define as cardiac cycle, isn't it? Now, now the phase of myocardial contraction is what we call as systole. And the phase of rest is what we call as diastole. See, in the summary slide, there isn't anything new. I, whatever concepts we have discussed, I'm just trying to reinforce it into you in a very simple words. I'm not going to any of the mechanism in the summary slide. So then you have the ventricular ejection phase, which is the phase of rapid ejection and reduced ejection. Then the difference between the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume is the stroke volume. And how much was stroke volume? It was 70 ml. And what was stroke volume? It is the amount of blood ejected from ventricle during one systole. Now the ventricles gets filled in diastole in two phases. You had the rapid filling phase and the slow filling phase. Now the heart sound in the cardiac cycle is due to the movement of the heart valves and the abnormality of the AV valves can be detected by the jugular venous pressure waves. And that's with the cardiac cycle. We have gone through the de in detail the different phases of the cardiac cycle, what exactly was happening in all the phases and that gives you a clear picture, a clarity on the different changes happening in the different uh, sites and uh, chambers of the cardiac cycle.